Hi, and welcome to this new video in the series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in today's video, we'll be going over what is arguably the most important concept in BLE, the Generic Attribute Profile, or GAP for short. Some of the topics we'll address in this video include the Attribute Protocol, or ATT, the Generic Attribute Profile, or GAT, Services and Characteristics, Profiles, as well as the different operations on the data exposed by devices. To better understand what GAT is, we first need to understand the underlying framework or infrastructure for GAT, which is the Attribute Protocol. The Attribute Protocol defines how a server exposes its data to a client, and how this data is structured within that server. The data is structured as attributes, and an attribute is simply the generic term for any data element that is exposed by the server. We'll talk about the different types of attributes here shortly. There are two roles within the attribute protocol. The first is the server role, which exposes the data it controls or contains. It's the device that accepts incoming commands from a peer device and sends out other types of packets such as responses, notifications, and indications, which we'll talk about shortly. The other role is the client role, which interfaces with the server with the purpose of reading the server's exposed data or controlling its behavior. This is the device that sends out commands and requests and listens for notifications and indications from a server. Keep in mind that a device can act in both roles, a server and a client at the same time. An attribute is structured as following. It includes a handle, an attribute type, or what's called a UUID, a value, and a set of permissions. Now let's talk about each of these in detail. First we have the handle, which is a 16-bit unique identifier for each of the attributes on the server. The handle has a value that ranges between the hex values of 1 and FFFF. Next we have the UUID, or the attribute type, UUID stands for Universally Unique Identifier. It's a 16-bit number in the case of a Bluetooth SIG adopted UUID and 128 bits in the case of a custom UUID defined by a developer or a manufacturer. Now there's no central database for UUIDs, so developers looking to create their own can randomly assign a value. There is one restriction though, which we'll talk about shortly. Let's look at some examples of UUIDs. Here's an example for a UUID of a Bluetooth SIG adopted service, called the battery service. The UUIDs of SIG adopted attributes all have a common base UUID, which is shown here. The 16-bit UUID replaces the four digits highlighted in red. Now in the case of a custom UUID, it will be represented by the full 128-bit number. The one restriction we hinted to earlier is that a custom UUID cannot share the base or conflict with the SIG adopted UUID. The attribute value holds the data that the server wants to expose. It's variable in length and it has a format that changes based on the attribute type. Permissions determine whether an attribute can be read or written to, whether it can be notified or indicated, and the security levels that are required for each of these different operations. So what is the generic attribute profile? The GAT defines the format of services and their characteristics, and the procedures that are used to interface with these attributes, such as service discovery, characteristic reads, characteristic writes, notifications, and indications. GAT takes on the same roles as the attribute protocol, or ATT. The roles are not set per device, but rather they are determined per transaction. So for example, when a request is sent, it is sent by the client, and then the server responds with a response. In the case of an indication, the indication is sent by the server, which requires that the client returns with a confirmation packet. Now similar to the attribute protocol, a device can act as both a GAT server and a client at the same time. We mentioned services before, but what is a service? Well, service is a grouping of one or more attributes, and it's meant to group together related attributes that satisfy a specific functionality on the server. Attributes within a service have different types. They could be either characteristics, which hold values, or they could be non-characteristic types, which help structure the data within that service. For example, the SIG adopted battery service contains one characteristic called the battery level but it also contains other attributes that are non-characteristics that help to structure the data within the service, such as the service declaration and include definition and others. 
A characteristic within a service represents a piece of information or data that the server wants to expose to a client. For example, the battery level characteristic represents the battery level percentage in a device which can be read by a client and is contained in the value field of that characteristic. A characteristic contains other attributes that help define the value that it holds. One type is properties, which define how a characteristic value can be used, such as read, write, write without response, notify, and others. Another type is the descriptors, which are used to contain related information about the characteristic value. Examples of these include the user description, fields used for subscribing to notifications and indications, and a field that defines the presentation of the value, such as the format and the unit of the value. Now, profiles are much broader in definition than services. They are more concerned with defining the behavior of both the client and the server when it comes to services, characteristics, connections, and even security requirements. Services and their specifications, on the other hand, deal with the implementation of services and characteristics on the slave side only. Let's take a look at the different types of attribute data operations. There are different types of attribute protocol packets. They include commands, which are sent by the client to the server, requests, which are sent by the client to the server but require a response, and the responses, which are sent by the server in response to a request, and then we have notifications, which are sent by the server to the client to let the client know that a specific characteristic value has changed. In order for this to be triggered and sent by the server, the client has to enable the notifications for that specific characteristic of interest. Now, the notification does not require a response from the client to acknowledge receipt. However, indications are very similar to notifications except that they require an acknowledgement to be sent back from the client to let the server know that the indication was successfully received. Confirmations are what are sent by the client to the server, and those are the acknowledgement packets that are sent back to the server in response to an indication. The two main types of operations that take place on attributes are reads and writes. Now reads are requests by nature, since they require a response with the value that's being requested to be read. Writes, on the other hand, can either be requests or commands. Requests are generally more reliable since they require a response that acknowledges the write operation. In the next video, we'll cover the topic of power consumption in BLE. We'll talk about what you can expect in terms of battery life, what parameters play an important role in determining the battery life, as well as how you can optimize to increase your battery life and lower the power consumption of your device. To learn more about Elasis, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit Elasis.com. Have a need for training or consulting services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.